Well, I've heard of, uh, of the festival, you know, I've known about it for, for quite a few years and always wanted to, uh, to be part of it. Uh, it's just such an incredible gathering of, of artists. Um, I mostly wanted to come here for inspiration. Um, and so when uh, Scott appro approached me, uh, telling me that uh, you know my uh, work might be displayed at the, in the trees, fe uh, trees uh, exhibit, I was just you know elated. Uh, it's just a, a fantastic uh, way of um, highlighting the work that I do with uh, with my subject, which is subjects, which is what I call the smaller majority, the, the non-charismatic part of the biodiversity. Uh, so in the end, I feel uh, that. This exhibit and my presence here is not so much about me, but about those things that I uh, that I work on to to protect and and bring into people's uh, conscience. Um, so, uh, you know, I I, I feel uh, you know super lucky to be able to be here, and uh, it's 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 an honor. And and as I said earlier, it's an incredible inspiration and a very humbling experience to to be among this group of people. I have to say I have seen them printed this big, uh, but to see their entire collection and this beautiful arrangement in this fabulous setting, it was just absolutely astounding. Really, really beautiful. Yeah. Being here at Look 3 has been a fantastic experience as uh, both, a, it's, it's an inspiration to be here. It's uh, meeting all my, my heroes of photography, meeting them and, and so on. It's, it's both inspirational and extremely humbling. Um, I love the fact that it's also a great networking opportunity. I meet editors, publishers, uh, stock uh, agencies and so on. So it's, it's a fantastic place to, uh, to create good contacts. Um, I've also had an opportunity to, to teach a workshop. Uh, I had a group of 25 young uh, students, uh, very enthusiastic, very talented. We spent an entire day covering different topics uh, related to, to nature photography. We had a field assignment and they produced uh, a body of work that was just remarkably good. That was, that was a very, very talented group of people. My memory doesn't go that far back. Uh, I've always been interested in, in the natural world, insects among them. Uh, I mean, quite honestly, my earliest memories uh, from childhood is to, you know, catching bugs, uh, catching frogs. Uh, uh, my parents were extremely supportive of my interests in, in the natural world. So I just never imagined a different path than, than becoming uh, somehow involved in, the, in working with the natural world. So. I became a, a biologist and eventually I, I became a conservation biologist uh, once I realized that this, this natural world uh, needs, needs our help. So it's, it's just, you know, I think it's part of my DNA actually to, to, to love this part of nature. I've, I've always used cameras, uh, but up to a certain point I only use them as a, as a strictly as a tool, technical tool, to help me with my work as an entomologist, as, a, as, a, as an insect uh, uh, systematist, taxonomist, um, just to document my things. And, um, but then uh, uh, I started branching out. I, I uh, realized that I really, really enjoy holding a camera and uh, uh, because at that point I was already technically proficient, but I never looked at the world. As a, as a true photographer would, I kind of um, started ex experimenting, started uh, trying to photograph my subjects in a, in a way that not only shows them what they are, but what's the context of their life. I, I, I really like photographing my subjects in the context of their environment. Uh, I like wide angle approaches and so on. Uh, so it was a gradual process and uh, I still use photography as a, strictly as a technical tool, but also as a, as a communication tool and, and just, just a way of, of showing, sh showcasing their, their amazing bodies and behaviors and, uh, and also the fact that uh, some of them um, are, are disappearing and we need, they need our help. Well, there are many. Uh, there are many challenges photographing small creatures. Uh, there, are, there are technical challenges. 
uh, because they are small. Uh, you need to use a fairly, uh, you know, specialized equipment for that. Um, of course, there are, there are problems with lighting and so on. Uh, but the main, the main issue, of course, is that these are living, breathing wild animals who don't like you being there. And uh, so it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of patience. And uh, I, I feel that it requires quite a bit of knowledge about your subject to get uh, an interesting representative shot of a, of a butterfly, of a grasshopper. It's really, uh, people tend not to think about it that way, but photographing insects is, is photographing wildlife. And we have to show them the same amount of respect. We should have, should have to give them the same amount of space, so to speak, uh, so they can display their natural behaviors and so on. So, so you know, there are technical issues that issues that have, have to do with the behavior of my of my organisms. Um, and then also is, there's the fact that I very often work in you know very remote areas, uh, areas where there are you know tropical diseases and so on. Uh, uh, currently, I work a lot in Africa, and uh, one of the major issues is the fact that I work at night because a lot of these insects are nocturnal, and uh, and there are lions out there, and so I have to have with me a, an armed guard uh, who just looks over uh, over me, and you know while I'm looking at the ground, he's looking around to see if anything is coming. So, you know, there's it's 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 a somewhat challenging uh, uh, field of photography, but also you know fantastically rewarding. My, my first encounter with the, with the giant uh, uh, Goliath bird eater, which is indeed the largest spider in the world, uh, uh, that happened for the first time when I was in uh, uh, Guyana in South America. And um, I of, of course knew of their existence, but at that point I had not seen one yet. And I was out at night um, uh, recording my insects. I work on insects that sing, so I often carry a recorder, uh, headphones, and I listen for things. And, and um, uh, I was just standing in the dark uh, listening to my insects, and then suddenly I heard footsteps. You know, quite distinctive, you know, something running on the, on the, on the ground. And I assumed that it would, would be a mammal because it was clearly large and making a lot of noise and I said when I turned on the light at first I thought I saw a mammal it was just a big hairy brown thing uh, and then a bulb went out in my head and said oh my god this is that spider so I you know I I, I photographed it and and um, um, uh, I collected it uh, to show our our uh, other scientists um, and then the, the, the spider was eventually uh, collected for a, for a scientific collection, not by me, uh, despite what many people thought, uh, but by, by other members of our expeditions, and it was uh, used for, um, for the national collection in, in Guyana where we were doing this work. Um, so, but anyway, it was, it was a, a very, very interesting encounter, and I, I've seen them uh, since uh, several times uh, in, in different places in South America. I did. People were quite upset that the spider was collected, um, which uh, it's kind of funny because where do people think all these specimens in the Smithsonian, the 16 odd million specimens come from? They all were collected. Uh, when they pick up, uh, when people pick up uh, a field guide to birds, how do they think those birds were painted in that book? Uh, collecting is an unavoidable, necessary, unpleasant, part of biological sciences. We cannot study bodies of organisms without collecting them. Uh, a lot of uh, a big deal was made of the fact that this spider is, uh, is rare. It is not. This is one of the most common species in South America. Uh, as a matter of fact, after I came home from that expedition, I saw the same species of spider on sale in, in my local pet store. So that's not an issue. Um, I guess, I guess uh, the lesson in all this was that it is possible for people to relate to a spider, which I took as a very positive message. Because if I can make people care about a single spider, uh, that means that maybe I can uh, make them care about things that actually matter, those species that are in fact endangered. Uh, there is a number of invertebrate species that are highly threatened, and they are threatened not by somebody collecting them, but by the, mostly by habitat loss uh, due to development, uh, 
uh, due to uh, climate change and so on. And that's what really matters. In my research, uh, what I'm trying to do is uh, do two things. One, I am uh, an entomologist, so I'm interested in insects, and I'm specifically interested in certain aspects of their behavior. Uh, I work primarily on insects that produce sound, so I'm interested in how that sound uh, is evolving, uh, how is the function of the sound in insect evolving, uh, why certain species are singing, so they're stopping to sing, so they uh, uh, develop other mechanisms of communication. So this is what I do as, a, as an entomologist. Um, I also uh, am interested in uh, uh, their biology uh, and also the, the way they are uh, capable of surviving in very different uh, habitats, sometimes extremely harsh habitats. Uh, so these are sort of my scientific interests. Uh, but uh, as, a, as a conservation biologist, uh, I see as my main uh, job to, first of all, uh, alert both the general public and conservation authorities of the plight of some of these smaller uh, organisms, insects, uh, uh, you know, spiders, uh, frogs, and so on. Because those things <clears throat> usually go under the radar of, of uh, big conservation organizations or, and, and, and the general public. Um, and as a photographer, uh, you know, I use, I use the visual media as, as one of the most uh, useful and, and powerful tools in conveying this message. It's so much easier for people to relate uh, to a subject or an issue if they can see it, if they can look into the eyes of the organisms that we are trying to protect. So I always do it with the utmost, utmost respect to my, uh, towards my subject and I show them in a way that uh, show their inherent beauty or complexity or colors uh, or, or uh, conversely I'm trying to show them as, as a um, part of their environment and highlight the role, the very often very important role they play in the ecosystem. So uh, the overall message is uh, I just want to know, uh, 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 let people know that these things exist, uh, what roles they play and why they need our help. So I, I often uh, uh, try uh, people uh, tr try to have people uh, do this kind of a mental exercise. Imagine looking at a bunch of let's say koala bears uh, from the top of the Empire State Building. They will all look like tiny little specks, uh, and you would be if if we if you lived there, you would never learn about koala bears. Uh, so what I'm trying to do is to kind of bring people to the level of those organisms. Uh, I often say that I rather than enlarging my subjects, I'm trying to shrink the viewer to just put them right in front of those uh, small and beautiful organisms and, and uh, realize that uh, each of them is different, each, each of them is beautiful and, and, and unique and, and uh, that's, that's what I'm trying to do. And I use a, a number of different techniques to achieve that, that effect, uh, but one sort of commonality in that is that, that I strive to remove the element of scale. I don't want the viewer uh, know how big that organism is so I use either a studio setting where I remove a, 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 you know the complete background so when you see something on the white screen you don't know if this is you know this big or if it's this big uh, and that's great and uh, another approach is to uh, use a wide angle technique uh, which shows the organisms in its natural setting but but because the perspective is distorted uh, the viewer feels like he or she is standing right next to the organisms looking at the environment through this organism's eye. Entomologists are probably far more tolerant to things happening to their bodies that have to do with, with you know, small organisms. So one of the animals that I've always wanted to see and photograph is the human botfly. Uh, the human botfly is a parasite of uh, primates. Uh, they develop in the skin of monkeys and humans. And the, the problem is that you never see those flies because rather than landing on you and laying eggs directly on your skin, as many other parasites uh, do. Uh, they essentially stay in the canopy of the rainforest and um, they use an intermediary to uh, spread their eggs. So the female botfly uh, catches a mosquito, lays mosquitoes on the body, uh, lays eggs on the body of the mosquito and then releases the mosquito. Then the mosquito flies, seeks you, lands in your skin, feeds on the blood, 
and the heat of your body triggers the emergence of the larvae that then they drop on your skin and burrow into the hole just made by the mosquito. Um, so when I, uh, I was working in, um, I was working in Belize in Central America, actually teaching a, a photography workshop. And uh, when I came home, I realized that, you know, I had these mosquito bites that were not healing. And very quickly, I realized also that I had the human bot fly, which wasn't the first time I, I had it. But, but I decided that this is my opportunity um, to raise it and actually see it and photograph it. Uh, you know, photogra uh, a human bot fly has, has to, up to that point has never been properly photographed uh, with, you know, the great care to detail and, and as, as I would give it. So, so I, I kept it in my skin. I had actually six of them initially. Uh, eventually I ended up with two uh, reaching the maturity. Um, it took about two, two and a half months for them to develop in my skin. Uh, now the, the entire process is completely harmless. I mean, I can, well, harmless, it's completely painless. Only every now and then you kind of feel something, that something is happening unless, and I, because I had more, more of them, one borrowed close to a nerve or something, so every now and then it was quite painful. So that one I, I removed. After the, after the, uh, the larva emerged, it pupated uh, in the soil and took another couple of months before the adult uh, fly came out. And so one morning I, I found it there and I was just ecstatic to finally see this elusive, uh, elusive organism. And uh, yes, deep down I was a little perturbed that I have these big things living in me. But at the same time, I realized that they are harmless. Um, you know, I, as a biologist, I find them extremely fascinating and that's about it. Yeah. <laughs>